Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anita Adifian. I'm the author of the book, Revealed, where I chronicle my journey with child sexual abuse, uh, depression, suicide, mental health, and came out on the other side. I'm also the founder of Advanced non Fulfilled Coaching Company, where I help young uh, racialized professionals advance in their careers and lead fulfilled lives in Canada. I'm also the founder of Ladies Arise, and this is where I help empower women. And this is a free platform. Ladies Arise is a free platform where I empower women to live um, intentional, holistic, purposeful lives and find that sweet balance between personal and professional life. And I'm also the founder of LoudTalences.org, and this is where I really just hone in on my experiences and educate and create awareness on sexual violence and mental health. So, yes, I'm a woman that wears many hats. Um, in my 8 to 5 job, I also work as a strategy and um, policy expert um, with the government. So there's so many things I do, but today I want to hone in a little bit on career and talk about, you know, um, seven ways that you can, um, um, on how you can go about asking for mentorship. Now, mentorship is what we going to talk about today. Now, this is important. I'll share a quick story. So a couple of years back when I was going to reach out to one of my mentors that I have now in my life um, to just help me and mentor me through my career in Canada, specifically in Canada, um, when I was going to reach out to her and we, when, when we got talking, um, she had asked me a couple of questions and whatnot, and I told her where I was and what I was looking for, right? And she asked me where I was at that time, and when I told her, she said, girl, you're crushing it. It took me, apparently it took me about three and a half years. Yeah, it took me about two and a half years actually to get to where I was at the time. And I was looking for more help to, you know, go beyond that level. It took me two and a half years. And she said it took her four years to get to that same spot, right? Now, considering that um, she's a Caucasian woman, grew up here, had all the connects, all the relationships, new people that, you know, she was working with. I came in as an international professional and somehow I managed to do that in two and a half years. But you know what really helped? Mentorship. Now I had a mentor, you know, that was already, I was working with at the time that I reached out to her that had helped me that far. Right. And there were very specific things I started looking for that, you know, <laughs> no offense, he's probably watching this video and he'll be like, girl, are you telling me that I wasn't enough for you? No, 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 you were enough. But I had a mentor at the time that, but there were very specific things I started looking for. One of them being, I needed a woman. Specifically, I needed a woman, you know, and I needed a woman who was not just in career, but also in business because that was the next phase I was going to. And a woman who, had broken some barriers, right? And this woman I, I reached out to had specifically broken barriers, being one of the youngest assistant deputy ministers, one of the people, one of the youngest people to hit that level at that time, you know, in her career. And so I wanted to break those kind of frontiers and I wanted to know what she did. But it took her four years to get to the level that I was at the time that I reached out to. It took me two and a half years. And what helped me really close that time gap was that I had a mentor that I was working with. So mentorship is very important in every area of life because a mentor is someone who takes you through the journey that they have been, a similar journey you want to embark on. They take you through that journey, you know, and help you avoid pitfalls. They tell you mistakes they've made. So you basically just ride on their shoulders and just have a smoother sail. Now you can go mentor somebody else with what you know in addition to what you've been taught and that person can break that same journey in six months or even less so that's the importance of mentorship all right if you want i can do a video on the importance of mentorship if that's something you like me to do leave me a comment below and i will be more than happy to, to put out a, a a video on what mentorship is and the importance of it but today we're going to talk about how you're going to ask for this mentorship things to consider seven things number one you want to go have and identify your goals and objectives Chances are that whoever you're asking to mentor you, you're asking them because they've achieved certain feats in their lives, which means that they're not idle people. They're busy people. So you want to be clear about what you're trying to achieve. Remember when I you know, gave that example earlier, I mentioned that I was looking for something very specific at the time when I approached this woman to help mentor me. I wanted a woman who had broken frontiers. I wanted a, and I wanted a woman because... You know, as women, there are so many things that, that, that come at us, right? And there are so many things we tell ourselves too that 
sometimes men tell themselves and we're not in the same way and then we are the ones that will typically consider family before anything else so i wanted and she's a family oriented woman and i wanted that specific person in my life and i wanted somebody of faith as well of the christian faith as well she had all of that so there were specific things i was looking for i needed to know how to navigate family and rise through those ranks that i wanted to rise at i needed to know how to you know negotiate specifically for salaries within the range that i was not looking at i needed to know you know how to navigate a transition um into work life working family but also not growing a business or building a business and she had done all of that so there were very specific things that i was looking for now i can tell you what i was looking for when i reached out to my previous mentor it, there's two mentors in my life so it's not like it ends as it were there's two mentors in my life but they were very specific things so what are your goals that you're looking to achieve what are your objectives do you know what you want right now it's possible that sometimes the reason you need a mentor is that you don't even know what you want that's a whole different conversation. Again, if that's something you know you want to learn about, put it in the chat and say, hey, I want to learn about the specific things. And hey, guys, while we're here, I just want to say that I want to put out content in whether it's in your career, in sexual violence, whatever it is, the topics that I'm passionate about that I speak on. If there are specific things you want me to talk about, please let me know. The only way I know is when you tell me, hey, Anita, can you share more on this topic? And I'll be more than happy to oblige. Number two identify potential mentors now it's one thing to know what you want it's another thing to not look for people who fit that if you don't know and this is the danger with not knowing what you want is that anybody will fit your box and that's not what that's not what you want now quick story remember when i was looking for all those things that i mentioned in in, in a woman you know the funny thing is at the time i didn't even have a person of faith in my list of what i wanted for mentors but when i was looking for a female mentor I specifically was looking for a female Caucasian mentor who had achieved certain feats in her career that people would typically say, well, it's, 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 uh, well, you broke the frontiers, right? That was what I was looking for. Now, I found someone and she's a great person. She's a great person, but boy, she swears a lot, a whole lot. And every time I'm talking, I'm cringing and it's like, and to be fair, those things, they drain me. They, they, they take energy from me right she's she's great she's full of energy full of life but it takes energy from me when you start you know using swear words especially when it's very consistent like every two words you say every three words she says there's like swear words in two of them you know so those things make me uncomfortable and so right off the bat i knew this was not my person great as she was she wasn't my person but there are times we still meet you know just to share some ideas share information great you know and so by the time i i went and i met this woman i met her during a, a training that I was attending and she was facilitating that training, immediately I met her and she started saying some things. She didn't even mention the word God. I just knew in my heart of her that this woman was a Christian. And I went to her afterwards and I said, you're a Christian. She's like, how did you know? And I said, only a Christian would say certain things. I won't tell you what it was. You know, and I, and I told her point blank, I'm looking for a mentor and I think you fit everything I'm looking for. You know, there's a certain confidence that comes with when you walk up to a person like that and say, I think I'm looking for something. And I think you have what I'm looking for. They will take you seriously. Oh, but she took me seriously, right? She took me seriously. Now, it didn't happen right off the bat, but it did happen, all right? And today, I'm glad to have her uh, in my life. Okay, so identify potential mentors. You may look at people within your network. You may look at people outside your network. And let me just say something. Sometimes the best fit to be a mentor in your life might be somebody who is your friend and might even be the same age as you are or maybe even younger, depending on what you're looking for. Now... Oftentimes, I find that people tend to take these kinds of relationships for granted. When they're your friends, they're your friends. When they have to wear that mental role hat and deal with you, they have to wear that mental hat and deal with you. If you cannot take them seriously, then don't go to them for mentorship. Rather, tell them, I want somebody like you that can mentor me. Can you find me somebody like you? I don't want to come to you because I want to protect our relationship and I'm worried about how it might affect our relationship, but I want somebody like you to help mentor me. Can you find me that kind of person? Chances are that they have those kind of people in their circle. So I just want to put that out there. All right. So number three, so once you've identified your goals and objectives, what am I looking to get from this mentor? Um, you've identified the potential mentors who are some people that can be that mentor. Number three, you want to reach out to them. All right. And I've kind of spoken a little bit on this. Now, if it's somebody that's outside of your network completely, you might need to send them an email. You might need to send them a message on LinkedIn. 
you might need to, you know, just talk to them or chat with them. Now, other places that people don't typically think about when looking for mentors is their professional associations. So, for instance, I am a public administrator. And as a public administrator, I'm a member of the Institute for Public Administration of Canada, IPAC. If I'm looking for specific mentors there, I can go there and look for one. And I'm sure they have mentors within that association and they can connect me once I tell them what I'm looking for. When I was working with the government of Saskatchewan, I also knew that they had this uh, mentorship program. And I reached out to them. I, I remember at some point I reached out to them and said I wanted a mentor. But I wasn't getting a match that I was looking for. So I just, you know, put that aside. And then I went to this um, training and I met this particular lady. And she had, she seemed like she checked off the boxes of what I was looking for. Thus, my asking her to be my mentor. So you really want to keep your eyes open. But you also want to be able to put that ask out. And I remember when um, Derek, who is my mentor and, you know, is male, I remember when I was going to ask him to be my mentor, it was crazy because I remember then, true story, y'all, um, God told me specifically, like, go ask Derek to be your mentor. And I was kind of lagging because I didn't know how to feel. I was like, I don't know what I want to tell him, you know, whatnot. Thankfully, he reached out and offered and said, look, you have so much potential and if you're willing to, I'd love to mentor you because I think there's so much in you. You just need a little bit of guidance because we all do. You know, so, um, so yeah, that was great, right? So reach out to them. If you don't put the ask, you might never get it. Now, if you're unsure, maybe if it's somebody that you don't know at all before, I recommend asking for a coffee first to say, I'm exploring someone to, I'm exploring the potentials of having a mentor. You seem like a person that I think would be great. Um, can we chat over coffee so I can share some of my goals and objectives with you? And, you know, we can just have a chat to see if it's something that you can oblige me or we can you know, work together. Those are some ways to go about doing that. All right. So reach out to them, book a time, send an email, whatever you need to do, book a time. I always recommend that coffee date with them. However, just to get a feel, you know, number four, when you've met with them, expose the purpose of your request. Be clear, be very, very clear. This is what I'm looking for. This is where I'm looking for it. This is why I think you might be a good fit. All right. Um, and then this is what I'm hoping to gain from the relationship eventually. Right. It's 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 important that you open up yourself and be transparent. Transparency is very, very key. Transparency, again, is very, very key. I've been burnt by this one. Right. To say this is what I'm looking for. And again, I get it. Sometimes you might not go in knowing everything you need. So that can also be a factor. Right. But it's that when you catch yourself and realize Oh, maybe I did this that this person may not like. Then be honest enough with yourself, be transparent enough to go back and say, hey, this is what this is. And I'm sorry, can we fix that? All right. So that's that's the other thing. Number five, be respectful of their time. If you set a time with the person to say we're going to meet once every week at 4 p.m., 3.55 at the latest, you better be there. 3.55 are the latest. Again, remember when I said that if you're asking someone to be your mentor, chances are that they are very busy people. They've achieved something in life. You want to respect their time. Be mindful of their time. Whether it's when you're fixing that coffee, whether it's um, what times you're sending them messages. Now, again, if it's somebody you have a relationship with beyond just the mentorship role, if it's not a very formal kind of mentorship, there might be some leeway on what the communications are. But even that, maybe put it into some form of formal or informal um, um, modus operandi or method of operation. How are we going to run this? How are we going to do this? Right. So that you can be, you can be clear, you can be clear on what times make sense to reach out to them on what conditions you need to reach out to them, you know, and if they give you things to do, do them and do them on time. You know, one of the things I find with a lot of people these days is they think they want mentorship or what they really want is identification with a particular person. Those are two different things. If you just want to be around someone for the purpose of identifying with them, well, I'm sorry, you're not going to get anything out of them. And people typically can see through that. If you want mentorship, if they're telling you that do five, these five things to avoid this pitfall in your career, the truth is that they know what they're talking about. When they give you a task to say, go do this, go do it. If they say, go and read this book, read the book. 
they got to where they are by probably doing those exact things and it helped them. You look at their lives. You love what you see. And you're going to them to say, hey, mold me to look a little bit like you. Maybe not exactly like them, but, you know, help me get to where you are. If they now tell you, you know, I did these five things, go do it. Why not just go do it? They probably figured out those five things on their own, right? And it took them five years to figure it out. And then they did it, it worked. Now you meet with them five minutes and five minutes later, you hear these five things, go do it. And they tell you the how to do it. And it's supposed to take you 30 minutes or one week. And in one week, you implement that. In one month, you get the same results that it took them five years to get. And you, you don't want to. <laughs> you're not ready for mentorship. I'm sorry, but you're not ready for mentorship. You're just trying to be identified with that person. All right. So if your mentor tells you go do something, you go do it. And part of being respectful of their time is that when they tell you go do that thing, it's so that maybe on the next session, we can have a conversation on what you did. Did it work? Did it not work? What were your challenges, impediments, and whatnot? And then they can, you can chat through that. So be respectful of their time. Um, and be flexible to work around their schedule. Remember, you're the one asking for the help. So be flexible to work around their schedule. All right? So number six, be persistent. <laughs> Do not be discouraged. Sometimes they might not even have the time to give you at, right off the bat as you want. So I remember when I was, you know, chasing this mentor that I was talking about, the first time that I reached out to her, you know, we had a quick chat, you know, she was like, yeah, you seem like somebody I would love to mentor. It didn't happen. Guys, it didn't happen for over a year. <laughs> so when I'm saying this, it wasn't like, oh, we talked about it. And then two weeks down the line, our first session was that it didn't happen for well over a year, maybe almost two years, actually. It was during the pandemic. I don't know what happened. And then we reconnected somehow. You know, and I said, hey, you know what? Now more than ever, I really need this mentorship. And in between all that time, every now and then I'll you know, send a quick note to say, hey, how are you doing? What's going on with you? I hope all is well. If I see that she did something great on LinkedIn, I will go, I will comment. I will say, hey, congratulations. So I was kind of in there in her face, but not overpowering at the same time. All right. So I was there like, hey, I'm still here. Look at me. Wait for me. You know, I'm waiting for you. You know, so I was there. I was persistent. And then I remember as fits will have it, I had to take another training with her. And I said, hey, can you stay on the call? You and I need to chat. And then we had this really nice long chat about, you know, what I was looking for. And she said, you know what? I've actually been feeling bad. I'm feeling guilty because for some reason you've been on my mind so much. And I think about you and I think about the fact that I really want to stop pouring myself into other people. You know, and um, thank you for not giving up. You know, I've been meaning to reach out, but I thought maybe you might no longer be interested. And I said, are you kidding me? You know, still need it. <laughs> still do. <laughs> you know. And so, yeah, be persistent. One or two years later, it still happened. All right. One or two years later, it still happened. So, and I'm grateful for that. Chase them. How badly do you want it? How badly do you want it? Chase them. And sometimes it's not that they are ignoring you. It's just that sometimes that's how busy they are, all right? But if you're not in their faces in a respectful way, in a respectful way, then they'll forget. Out of face is out of, I'll be out of sight, is out of mind, right? So number seven, and finally, be grateful. Show gratitude. Show gratitude. You want to make sure that you are grateful. If they give you an insight, be grateful. Whether or not you applied it and it worked, be grateful. If they opened up themselves to you, because they can keep all that information to themselves and watch you grind and hustle, right? Now you'd still get there. Maybe. Maybe not. But you'd have them to, again, tell you what to do, what not to do, how best to do it. I remember one time one of my mentors um, asking me to go talk to someone. <laughs> I could not for the life of me understand why the heck do you want me to talk to this person? I don't want to talk to them. And more so in my mind, I felt like I'm leaving the organization. Why do I have to talk to them? You know, but he insisted. I remember going to talk to this person. I remember even walking into the office thinking, what am I even going to talk about? Why am I even here? Why am I listening to this guy? Remember I said, if they told you to do something, 
there's something they know that you might not know. If they tell you to do something, just do it. They see ahead of you. That's the whole point of mentorship is that being there, done that, seen it all, know all the pitfalls, know all the hills where the mountains are, know all the short courts now, you know, especially when you've seen them repeat that success over and over. Man, they have something. Go to them. You know, I remember one client I had one time, I remember when he came to me, you know, something he said, and I felt really humbled. He kept telling me over and over, you know, Anita, you're my mentor. And every time he said it, I just start laughing because my man, I'm like, how old am I? You know, and he kept, you know, but one thing he kept telling me was, look, there's something you know that I don't know and I need what you know. So <laughs> what do you want me to do? But I liked what he said next better. I said, how much do I need to pay to get out of you? You know, so anyway, yeah, and I remember going to have this conversation at the instruction of my mentor, and I and I had the conversation with this person, and I came out feeling very surprised because, huh, I can't tell you details, but one thing I'll tell you is this my perception of what I thought about this person that I had to go have this conversation with. Now, not all of the perception changed. But I got insights as to why the person thought the way they thought and how that thought process translates into actions. And when they translate into actions, I could even just really sit there and ask myself like, okay, so why did I feel impacted in this way? And we had the conversations on all of those things. Plus he really got to know more about me, but not just me, but also people, my graded professionals, like myself, he had insight into so many things that before that time, according to him, he said that he never really thought about, like it didn't even cross his mind. Now imagine I refuse to do this. And I remember going back to tell this, my mentor, that look, thank you so much. Like this really helped. Every time I apply something and I go back to him or to my, you know, my female mentor, and I tell them, I did what you asked me, and these are the results that I got. It gladdens their heart. It empowers them. It encourages them. I'll tell you this. Some people sometimes might, um, some people sometimes might be in a place, even when they seem very achieved, sometimes the question too. Sometimes they might doubt themselves too. Sometimes. And the truth is that you never know what time you'll catch them at. You might catch them at a time where they needed exactly what you wanted to tell them. To say, thank you, this worked. And that's all they needed, to just be encouraged. And that's another thing. Maybe even ensuring gratitude is that encourage them. It's their birthday. Here's a little birthday gift. Birthday notes. Birthday card. Take them out for lunch. Whatever that looks like. Little subtle ways to say thank you. To say I appreciate you. Whatever you know that they need. How they like to be appreciated. Learn that and appreciate them accordingly. Because the truth is that the more grateful you are, the more they're likely to pour out into you. So I really hope that this has helped you. So these are seven things to consider when you're asking for mentorship number one identify your own goals and objectives identify potential mentors that would help you meet those goals and objectives reach out to them all right many of us identify them and then we beat about the bush um explain the purpose of the intent of the relationship you're looking for of your request to mentor for them to mentor you okay many of us are not very straightforward with this what are you looking for i don't know back to number one be respectful of their time, number five. Be persistent. Sometimes it's not that they don't want to mentor you. Sometimes it's not that they don't have the... They're not interested. They might be going through some things in their lives that they need to make adjustments on. And then finally, be grateful. Show gratitude. However they like to observe, however they perceive, they receive appreciation, find what that is and show it to them. So I hope this has really helped you. Let me know which of these um really speaks the most to you and i look forward to hearing from you again if there are topics specific topics you like me to speak on let me know in the comments don't forget to like this video don't forget to 
um subscribe subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to share sharing is very important you don't know who will need this and that's also how you help support me so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video